if you are a regular viewer of this channel, you might think that this is a rather unusual topic for me. AI has relatively little to do with world building or monster design, after all. Well, that statement might be true for the time being, the technology is advancing at a breakneck pace. Regardless, I aim to approach the concept of artificial intelligence from a broader perspective and to discuss why I believe that in the case of creative work, it has the potential to cause great harm. Now, there's an important distinction to make here. I'm not an AI doomer, I do not think civilization as a whole will be destroyed by language models. We'd have to be very careless and actively self-sabotaging to even get close to such a situation. Rocco's basilisk is not something we'll have to worry about, not in small part due to the faulty logic of that thought experiment with an undeservedly cool name. Why would an AI seek what I can only describe as super revenge? But I digress, it is worth noting that while AI will not take the piss on its own, humans who use it will. There is an increasing trend of using artificial intelligence generated text, voice, images, video scripts or anything really to scam people out of their money or spread misinformation. This is an unfortunate fact, but not something I have the sufficient knowledge to discuss in depth, nor do I have quick and easy solutions. Not taking anything at face value is the best thing we can do. On the other hand, AI is an incredibly useful tool in many fields. Summarizing large documents, writing code, finding better solutions, there are a number of ways language models can make life easier. And while we have to be mindful that what we get might not be the actual truth, or may have hidden caveats, there's nothing wrong with these use cases in principle. It is basically another step in automation, saving us time with not much lost in the process. But what about art? What about creative work, like stories, paintings, music? Is the process of making something, the effort put in by the author, unnecessary? Is it something we want to get rid of? Can the expression of self lose meaning by trivializing the practice? This is a rather philosophical subject, and as such, much of the conclusions are subjective, different for each person. Ultimately, this whole video is just a drawn-out discussion of what I personally think, Still, I'm a big fan of objectivity, therefore I'd like to approach it from an analytical perspective first and foremost. We should try to determine the state of things as best we can and draw our conclusions based on truth, rather than going off of gut intuition. So, to begin our exploration of this topic, we should determine what art is. You know, the easy part. Lucky for us, countless generations before us have already tried to define this nebulous concept. The most common definition is that art is a vehicle of expression, an avenue through which one can convey their ideas or emotions. I'd add to this that the communication of these thoughts is indirect, otherwise just telling someone that you are hungry would be art. This is a pretty solid and simple explanation but most attempts that try to further specify or add to it are doing a piss poor job. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, for example, lists a number of constraints, one of which is this. Such entities sometimes have non-aesthetic, ceremonial or religious or propagandistic functions, and sometimes do not. They have just described everything in existence. Stellar job. There's also this bit by the Cambridge Dictionary. Fuck you, Cambridge. My drawings may be ugly, but they are art, goddammit. The elegance of this definition is in its simplicity, as it conveys more than one would think on a first reading. A vehicle of expression. Therefore, it has to be intentional. One has to set out to create something with the explicit intent to broadcast part of their experience or evoke a specific feeling in the beholder. Art becomes art through the creator and not through the audience. Let me elaborate a bit. Let's say someone makes a chair to sit on. It is crude, it is simple, it is meant to serve a purpose with no more than the necessary effort expended to make it. Naturally, people will feel a certain way when looking at it, but they cannot glean a purposeful message from it. Everything they take away is a product of their own. Compare that to someone taking their time and building a chair with various added shapes and motifs. Unnecessary, superfluous bits that serve no purpose beyond aesthetics. Let's say that they want one simple thing. The person who sits on it should like how the chair looks. They should feel appreciation for the craftsmanship. 
they made art. Now, whether or not they succeeded in invoking the specific emotion is a different question altogether. Death of the author and all that. I'll expand on that a bit later. For now, let's take another hypothetical. Someone spills a can of beans accidentally, and the mess on the floor looks eerily like Henry III of France. They may or may not realize that, then clean it up, and that's that. No art was made. However, if they took the time to immortalize it through a photo, or later conveyed their experience through a short retelling, aka a story, then art was had. Through the act of sharing this occurrence, or the surprise they felt, art is made. It is not the splurt of beans and souls that is the art, but their story, their photo is what qualifies. They made that with the intent of sharing their experience, make others feel like they did. As the last example, let's have a beautiful landscape. Through cosmic ordeal, by chance, a piece of land on this planet looks incredibly pleasing from a specific angle at this hypothetical time. It makes people feel all sorts of emotions, like awe or happiness. But it is not art, as it is a complete accident. It is yet another catalyst for art, something to share with others through deliberate means. Now, one might have the idea that notifying someone who has their back to the site and pointing at the landscape qualifies as art under this definition. The only retort to this I have is that the definition is imperfect. This is an exception that proves the rule, I guess. Now, to drive the point home, the reason I prefer the idea that art is defined by the author and not the audience is because I like when words have an actual purpose. By this I mean that if art was decided in the eye of the beholder, then literally everything would be art, as I'd be hard pressed to name a single thing that cannot make a hypothetical person feel something. What is and is an art would become completely subjective and different for each person, thus losing a shared understanding of the concept. Either way, while I think debating definition from a utility perspective can be useful, we do not necessarily need to agree here. Simply know that moving forward, when I say art, this is how I define it. Art is a vehicle of expression employed to convey experiences and emotions through indirect means. So, with this in mind, can AI art even be considered art? Well, yes. There is a person feeding prompts or questions to a software, and they may even curate or transform the result to better fit what they wish to express. Unless the prompt is randomly generated text, there is purpose behind the art. The difference is in the effort. Even post-singularity, a self-aware AI would still convey its own thoughts, and the human component is not a necessity. Animals can make art, after all. The larval case of a caddisfly might not be art, as it is probably strictly for utility purposes. But the carefully curated pebble of a Gen 2 penguin is definitely art, as they mean to strengthen their bond with their significant other. They wish to make them feel a certain way. The pebble is used for something beyond its physical capabilities, if you want to be very melodramatic about it. So, a 50-page novel shut out by ChatGPT as a response to a three-word prompt is as much a piece of art as the Melzen Book of the Fallen series, which took Steven Erickson well over a decade to write. This is the objective reality if we use the aforementioned metric to determine art, but you could probably tell by my wording that I do not hold them in the same regard. Indeed, art is not an accolade, it is a category. There is bad art and good art just as there is low effort and high effort art. And that is the crux of most of the issues I take with automatically generated pieces. Now, as I've stated before, AI can serve as a tool to make our lives easier in many fronts. Similar to the effects industrialization and automation had, some processes no longer require human labor. It is a double-edged ball. Oh wow, I misspelled blade as bald. Ah, oh, fuck it. It is a double-edged bolt for sure, as it also means that job opportunities are lost, which is not compensated for by the ones created. But I am not here to prove there is a net loss with the advancement of AI. No, that would require extensive studies, and this is just a shit little video on the internet. Besides, it is technically irrelevant for what I aim to discuss. So, with the example of industrialization, some menial tasks became obsolete. 
agriculture hasn't been the same since, as large machines help people sow and reap on a massive scale with a fraction of the time required. However, the act of growing your own crops as a hobby is not gone. In fact, a large number of people do that in their own backyard or rented plots. They get a similar enjoyment out of their labor and reap the benefits of harvestable plants. I won't go into the effects of large-scale industrial agriculture on the environment, as that is a far more dubious question. But we technically did not lose something that could entertain people, perhaps even give life meaning for a few. There is a difference between horticulture and art though. Art is meant to convey emotions and experiences to other people. I spent quite a bit of time explaining that art, in my definition, does not require an audience to be art. However, that does not change the fact that intuitively, most people create art to be consumed. It does, after all, lose some of its societal and personal value if no one gets to see, read or hear it. For countless generations, humanity has been in a very privileged position. There is no other species that can experience so many lives, so many stories, so many feelings without actually living through them. Art can teach us lessons, make us reflect on our morals, our past or future, get a taste of emotions we might never have felt otherwise. Art enriches our fleeting existence. Art can grant longevity to our passing age, our history, even beyond dry facts. Therefore, a few stick figures drawn with crayon can have far more value to the species than a super painting destroyed immediately after its creation. I have already said that growing plants as a pastime can give life meaning for some. Art is not too dissimilar, but my gut intuition tells me it affects far more people. The vast majority of artists create their pieces with the desire for it to be experienced, either by a select few or as many people as possible. So, why would we replace the creation of art with a random dice roll? Well, there could be a couple of reasons, and to be completely fair, I go through them. First off, profit. Possibly the easiest to dismiss as an emotional response, but let's take a deeper look. People look for entertainment to keep them occupied during their free time or to offer them something pleasant in an otherwise difficult life. Entertainment, by its nature, is art, and for someone seeking nothing more than a pleasant time, what does it matter if it was generated artificially or created with deliberate thought? It is, after all, infinitely easier to leave everything up to a language model and other tools to create music, images, videos perhaps even a movie recreating actors and their voices from a vast database, easier and cheaper. It is the most difficult argument to contend with and probably the one I fear the most. If common people do not reject artificial entertainment, companies will not stop making it. If companies will not stop making it, art becomes little more than shovelware, where at most there are a few pages of input from an actual human, created endlessly, limited only by processing power. For people who do not really care what they are consuming, who do not wish to engage with it on a deeper level, it matters little how deliberate everything is. If it's coherent and rehearses some of the effective techniques to entertain people, it serves its commercial purpose. What I really take issue with is the drowning out bit. There is nothing inherently wrong with low effort creative work that automatically stitches together parts of what has already been created. But creating art is often expensive and time consuming. Some of the most impressive pieces created by human hand could not have been completed if there wasn't a financial aspect to it. If the creator or creators did not get money to spend on their craft and, well, sustain their bodies in the meantime. Now, I do not believe that if companies begin churning out AI sludge, people who wish to engage with art at a deeper level will cease to exist. Seeing what a person has created, what their message is, immerse ourselves in the emotions and experiences they wanted to share, see where they excelled and where they fell short, these hold a lot of enjoyment for some, including me, perhaps including you too. This subset of the global audience will likely prefer to spend their money on organic art, Therefore, there will be some demand. However, the demand will surely be lower than the supply if we go by how many artists strive to carve out a living today. The thing is, many wish to create, many have the talent for it, and the best art could come from the most unlikely of places. Ratatouille was right, anyone can cook. In a perfect world, 
even with AI stuff limiting the market, the best creators would be supported by the remaining audience, but that is an aspirational goal we cannot possibly achieve. If Susie living in Bumfuck Nover has written the most excellent script, but has no connections to the shrunken industry, her movie will likely never get made. Even as things currently stand, that is a long shot. But if demand for entertainment is supplied by nothing other than human-made art, then her chances are better. In the possibly near future, I fear we will lose out on some incredible art, simply because the creators will lack funding, especially by big corporations. I have, time and time again, heard this weird argument that AI will be able to write better scripts than the current Hollywood trend of absolute turds, but it will not be able to create the likes of the Lord of the Rings. Now, this is probably true, for now. But this does not justify why we should just let AI take over entertainment. It might not be able to write the new Lord of the Rings, but it does not need to. It needs to do precisely what the argument itself admits to. Write something that is not absolute shit. Would Peter Jackson's trilogy have been created if Warner Brothers had the chance to make dozens if not hundreds of AI movies for the same cost? I highly doubt that, as the latter is a much safer bet, where most of them can lose money if a few of them strike gold. But even if I'm wrong, there is good art beyond the absolute pinnacle. I wouldn't lose that either. This kind of segues into the next pro argument I wish to address. What if the AI art that is created is objectively good? Excellent even. What if the roll of the dice hit the perfect number, all in natural 20s? With such a low barrier for creation, it is bound to happen. It is bound to happen multiple times, really. This is something I would have to somewhat concede, but not fully. Good art can come from minimal effort, with random chance taking the wheel and composing something that allows people to take away far more from it than the individual building blocks. How much does intent and purposefulness matter when it comes to art? Well, I'd say intent is largely irrelevant to the piece itself. Death of the author is something I wholeheartedly subscribe to. The creator may not be fully aware of what they have made, and could even have an incorrect image or assumption of its content. Art should, first and foremost, be judged on its own merits, and author input is a bonus at best, or faulty information at worst. People and their opinions may change over time, and it is natural to make mistakes. These alone make one's commentary of their own work unreliable. Therefore, even though there is a human component at the beginning of the process, their initial intent is irrelevant. However, purposefulness is not something I dismiss so easily. Whether something is the fruit of actual planning or the roll of a die can matter a great deal. There is genuine appreciation to be had when looking at something complex. We can discern that the author or authors set out to do something difficult. There was something they wished to convey in a particular way. If the end result is good, it is all the more impressive that they pulled it off, even if the product is not precisely what they envisioned. A level of luck is involved, sure, but we can appreciate the merit of hard work and care, potentially enhancing our enjoyment of the piece itself. In short, it does not matter what they set out to do, but the fact that they set out to do something does. Since AI currently works by scraping a bunch of data from a source, cutting it up, and rehashing it in a way to fit the prompt, there is no true purpose behind what it does. While such a rearrangement of data by a lifeless machine is impressive on some level, the emotions one will feel, the experiences one will get out of it, is largely the work of chance. The AI may correctly build up tension and create setups to pay them off later, but there was no thought behind it. No person tried their best to think with the head of other people who potentially never existed. No mortal mind struggled to be consistent or make an engaging character arc. It is a result of data points arranged into a particular order based on precedent. There is little to appreciate in terms of the craft. To be completely fair, this is mostly subjective. Some of you might not care at all about what went into the creation of something, so long as you enjoy the end result, which is fair enough, but 
I struggle with the idea that something artificially generated can be considered objectively good. After all, if you roll your 20-sided die and score the highest possible result, was that impressive or just lucky? The idea of an infinite number of chimpanzees typing away comes to mind. If one of them smashes their little hands fortunately enough to write the code of Baldur's Gate 3, do we upload the chimpanzee or just go at the probability of it happening? Either way, again, it is a fair thing to say that one does not care how the sausage is made, only that they enjoy its consumption. Additionally, for those that define art as something one can find emotional value in, it is definitionally irrelevant how that thing came to be. Whether it appeared naturally, was made by a human, or was generated artificially, if they can take away something from it, that's all that matters for them. As with most subjective factors, like enjoyment, there is little we can argue about, as it solely depends on the beholder. But there is one other aspect that might affect them too. AI art is cheap. I do not mean in terms of financial cost, but rather requirements. Beyond the prompt provided by a person, everything is done by something that does not rest, does not sleep and does not get bored. It is something that, once created, can be replicated infinitely, limited only by available machines. It can, theoretically, create infinite pieces of art for as long as the universe exists, even if all they had access to was a single prompt. There would be a lot of repetition, sure, but that only exacerbates the problem. A flood of content. Content that is disposable, often superfluous. Sure, one might enjoy, say, a new AI song, but here's 10 million nearly identical melodies, and while you were listening to that one, billions more were created by billions of machines across the globe. There is no chance in hell you could listen to a single percentage of them, and why would you even want to? There is a cultural aspect linked to all art. Art created by people is finite. It is still much more than any one person could consume, but following a few artists or dabbling in some genres are well within reason. It is mostly the norm, the core around which communities form. Communities who share their favorites, or what they found to be the best. Communities who anticipate new entries and discuss them. This aspect is far less likely to occur with AI. In fact, we mostly see the opposite. Large masses of mostly sludge dumped onto the internet. No time to think about what you saw or heard, no time to critique, no time to theorize about what could be next, as that is already here, and most of the meaning behind it is random anyway. Even man-made art can inspire apathy once it turns into a constant flow of bad to mediocre mucus. Just look at Marvel. Ironic that they chose to use AI for one of their shows too. I believe it can be more fulfilling, healthier for one's psyche to engage with the art they consume rather than stand under the metaphorical pipe and open wide for the unending stream of stuff. TikTok was already destroying people's attention spans and mental health before AI and it will only get worse. But you might have caught on that I said maintaining a community around a particular segment of art is simply far less likely to occur with AI, not impossible. Yes, there is a use for AI in art that has fewer negatives and I do not fully dismiss it like I do with other forms of it. Using AI generated art as a springboard, a stepping stone, a basis for one's work. An act not too dissimilar from taking an existing image and drawing over it to create something new. A bit like composing a tribute, a song or rewriting a story, essentially making something highly derivative but still unique. It would be difficult to argue against this form of AI based art. While the first version of the given piece was not actually made by the artist, they did take the time to correct it. They put some, or perhaps a lot of effort to shape it into the thing they set out to create in the first place. Something that conveys their own ideas and feelings with purpose rather than coincidentally. Naturally, there is a difference between something that was manually created from the ground up and something that came from transforming an already existing piece. But this is not some new possibility that came with AI. People have been using the work of others to build on it or take it apart and reassemble it into something new. And there is nothing wrong with this practice as long as the process is actually transformative and the end result is tangibly different. Basically, it is fine 
if you aren't taking the piss. That being said, there is a bit of an extra dimension to it. Generally, when it comes to two pieces of art with equal or similar quality, the one that was created from scratch will be more impressive. However, as I discussed before, the amount of effort involved affects subjective elements like enjoyment or respect. Therefore, all that matters in this case from an objective, quality-based perspective is that the end result is good. And on this note, here I come addressing a point that takes a very high IQ to come up with. At least, that is what I assume based on the general attitude of those that regurgitate it every chance they get. Everything is derivative. Yes. I'm so blown away by this revelation, I almost deleted this video in shame. Jokes aside, it is mostly true. Our experiences and the art we consume shapes the art that we make. It is quite possible that no sapient life is able to imagine stuff they have never had a chance to see, hear, smell or perceive in any way. We cannot make up something wholly unprecedented, only recombinations of what we actually know. Yes, we are living in times where no matter what you create, someone somewhere at one point in history has already made something at least a bit similar. But that does not mean that all new art is worthless or that everything is a carbon copy. It does not matter where the building blocks came from or what the end result intentionally or coincidentally resembles. The worth of an artistic rendition is not found in other creations. This is precisely why I am confident in saying that there is a stark contrast between AI dice rolls and all but the most shameless copies of artworks. When a thinking, living mind is behind the restructuring, when someone is purposefully taking pieces and uses them to make something new, something to enrich another person's life, or tell them of an idea in an indirect manner. Conversely, language models just take apart data, try to find patterns, and replicate them. At best, the person who curates the output post hoc rationalizes that the given Frankenstein's monster of an art piece actually does achieve the effect they wanted to. At worst, it is up to the audience to find meaning where there wasn't meant to be any. Now that I have laid out my thoughts and opinions on the matter, it is time to make some conclusions. Let's start with a hot take. AI art isn't inherently bad, I wouldn't keep anyone from using it, and it is not morally reprehensible to do so. But I had a good reason to make this video. It is a tool that has a great deal of potential to cause harm. If we could ensure its ethical use, I would have nothing against it. Some are writing up prompts to mess about and entertain themselves, perhaps share a few of the results with their friends, or even the world at large. That causes no damage in my estimate. But the dangers are still there. Flooding the world with disposable art, taking movies, games, books, music, images, and everything else with actual meaning behind it, and replacing them with stuff that only has something to say by accident. Talented people losing their jobs because sludge costs less and makes more profit, missing out on potential masterpieces due to market saturation, robbing future generations of experiencing organic art, generations who would unwittingly consume what is conveniently available. So, what would I do? What is my suggestion to fix the world if I'm so eager to point out the problems? I'm not actually sure. I'm of a liberal mindset and would not forbid people from having fun with the technology. I'd say making profit off of something that was made by taking pre-existing stuff without the author's approval or knowledge and mixing it up is something we should take a long, hard look at. Is something really transformative if the transformation process is automatic with no human input beyond the one that initiated it? What about taking people's likeness and voices? Are we really not entitled to our own corporeal form? Is a man not entitled to his brow? Should someone be able to scan your every attribute and profit off of it indefinitely by fully replicating it in countless iterations? These are some murky waters, where ethics seem to have gone out the window and everyone is racing to create a dystopia for entertainment. But I digress. Evolution has made humans to want to exploit everything as much as they can and defeat their opposition. Many have not learned to abandon these primal urges to seek a fulfilling life without hurting others. For all my talk about the birth of AI art and where it stands in relation to man-made creations, this is the stuff that really haunts me. A future where humanity has no desire to make things, just to consume them. 
I hope the world at large isn't seeking to become simple observers in a sea of meaningless grey muck flowing at an untenable rate from an industry devoid of thought. Even if the muck is colourful and of excellent quality, I fear we would lose so much and gain very little. I'd be interested in hearing what you yourselves think about the whole AI art buckle. Do you disagree with me? Do you think I'm over dramatizing it all? Are you perhaps of the opinion that it is even worse than I portrayed? I know the pushback was pretty strong against this stuff early on, but as technology improved, I fear there are a lot of people coming around to it. Either way, this is it for the video. You can find all the usual links like Discord and Patreon in the description below. We'll be back to Monsters, Wellbeing and Realism shortly, and I hope I see you there. Bye!